we're, we're contemplating a six-hour drama. And this is a drama that would be broadcast in the U.S. and in Europe, and then in the rest of the world. It will be an international co-production. Um, the financing will come from an American broadcaster and a British broadcaster. And we're in the very, very early stage. And in the research stage, you story collect. And that's really the, the reason why we're here now, is to hear from you what you think the important stories are. Help this project. We want to talk today about the narrative of this place, of Palestine, Israel, Israel, Palestine. First, I'll ask Nadia to say something about the project that we know what we are talking about. Why we're yeah. here. Yeah, why we're here, yes. I would say, well, the Four Generations Project, which is the working title um, of our project, was born out of a sincere desire to to create a new dialogue, a communication. The project came about, Iris and I, Iris El Hanani and I met each other over a year ago in New York, and we were grappling with, with what we could do together um, that, in the creative realm that could impact, uh, you know, create some, some amount of change. And we felt that really harnessing, um, you know, even the entertainment media platform um, could be one of the most potent ways to deliver a new view in to the actual people living on the ground. And, and here we are today, so completely grateful that, that we're able to sit with you and that you that were willing to come and talk to us about those iconic narratives that have defined the identities of the people in the region so that we can craft something very authentic and meaningful. And we were able to be here today in, uh, because of the very gracious support of the Louise T. Bluen Foundation. It's been a long journey, but it started with um, Iris on this particular subject when we were walking in Petra. Huh? And uh, what a beautiful place to start this dialogue. Um, but beyond that, we have, um, my life has been a consolidation of dialogue amongst the different countries traveling around the world for the last 20 years. And it's all about the enrichment of oneself, their language, their values, their belief and their tradition, which is much more important than the word religion because it's in essence the foundation of all. I don't like the word religion. So much blood has been shed on that word. I prefer to hear and respect the tradition and the values and the belief of each other. So through my, my childhood, I was very interested in, in art. They went on to business. And because I'm, personally, I am um, dyslexic on one side and ambidextrous, so totally probably confused inside. <laughs> and I decided that because I've been so lucky in business and consolidated about 400 magazine in a lapse of 15 years, I said how fortunate one can be and I had 20 business, so I decided to sell that business. And, and I said, what else could I do where I could really add value and try to make a change in a statement? So I decided that art was very important. As a child, I was brought up in a cultural sort of world. I was very fortunate. And that's what we have to give to this region and many other regions. And so I said, well, I started buying uh, magazines because I thought the knowledge is so important to communicate it not only to the wealthy people that can afford it, but the people that are poor. So we started gathering, now we have about 150 publications around the world just in cultural activities. Then we said, well, we've been so fortunate so far, why don't we start an internet platform? So we will be starting an internet platform on the dialogue of the visual art. What is the impact of visual art and performing arts on politics, economics, science, and our everyday life? And then we say, well, after that, I think we have a mission. We have to start a foundation. We have to start a foundation and to talk about two issues. One is about the dialogue of culture. It's a very vast sort of sentence. 
And the second one was on the enhancement of the brain through creativity. Well, how can we speak about creativity in this region when the basics are not there, the basic of peace? Am I an idealist? Je ne sais pas. <laughs> Probablement. But I still believe in peace. I don't know this region very well. It's my second time here. But I know it's the hub of a lot of difficulties in the world for many reasons. And I think that it's mixed with lots of emotions, a past that's very strong. And I think that there's no great solution, but there is at least a dialogue to be said. And I think that's why I wanted to hear, first of all, the first minutes were exciting already of what you've said. And I think through dialogue, it is a beginning. The dialogue through media, through media including internet, television, and magazines. And we can be of great help on those three fronts. What are our activities and our objectives? One is on the culture beyond borders is this activity. We have a play as well that will be so starting with Soldier, Soldier's Tale with Jeremy Iron and other producers and contributors that starts from London to Iraq and to New York, done with actors from Iraq and British troops. It should be very interesting. They're starting to train together, and it's wonderful to see. We have other activities that we promote in between China uh, with Minister of Culture and the government there to start a very important dialogue through culture to avoid possible cult political conflicts. Now, culture is not magic, and especially in this zone. I mean, we don't come here with the hope of, of being magicians, but only to, to be humble and to listen to both sides. I think the main purpose of this that we can all discuss where the objective and the goal is of this work, but I feel that the main objective is for the two countries, Israel and Palestine, for us to hear what you all have to say, with all your great minds, with all your great stories. I think that is one of the most important objectives, is to reach out for those children that have no hope. And then the second platform is to hear it in the world. I spoke about, you spoke about the origin and it's pain, and I think that has to be highlighted on both sides. And what is the meaning of violence, and how there's no solution to violence? And then, yes, there can be a dream. But again, that dream has to be very close to reality. Otherwise, it's not tangible. So what is the dream, and what is reality, and how tangible can we get? So those are my, my words I want to Thank you all for your participation, and I will be there all through to give you support. And I think it's through humility on both sides that we can have hope. Thank you.